Hello and welcome to Daily News Simplified. Here we take up important news articles and discuss them in detail as per the demands of UPSC examination. Topics for today's discussion are displayed on your screen. Let's begin the discussion. The first article of our session is based on the news appearing on Indian Express June 13th. This article pertains to GS3 syllabus specifically to agricultural productivity, green revolution, high yielding variety seeds and biotechnology. We have taken a mains question from 2019. The question says how has India benefited from the contributions of Sir Shwaswaraya and Dr. M. S. Swaminathan in the fields of water engineering and agricultural science respectively. The approach for this question has been given in the word and a PDF document. In this news article significant achievements in the food productivity has been shown. Due to green revolution, the production of food grains has increased from 74 million tons in 1966-67 to 105 million tons in 1971-72. In 1971-72, India became self-sufficient with grain imports declining to nearly zero. In this graph, it is clearly shown food production today is three times of 1971-72 period. Also despite a decline in wheat production in the year 2021-22 wheat production remained greater than 100 million tons every year since the year 2018 and 19 the next part of the discussion is about why there was such a significant increase this increase in the production of food grains particularly that of wheat can be attributed to many factors such as introduction of high yielding varieties of seeds fertilizers pesticides better irrigation facilities mechanized equipment and modern agricultural techniques these were collectively termed the green revolution in india green revolution spread over the period from 1967 till 1978 it was launched as part of third five year plan with the long term objective of agricultural modernization based on rural development it was introduced mainly in northern india especially in the state of punjab uttar pradesh and haryana moving to the next part of article it talks about new varieties of wheat that led to the green revolution the traditional wheat and the rice varieties were tall and slender they showed vertical growth on the application of fertilizers and water while lodging when their ear heads were heavy with the well filled grains this resulted into low productivity the green revolution entailed breeding these semi dwarf varieties with strong stems that didn't lodge this variety showed high tolerance for the high fertilizer application and the more inputs resulted into more outputs in the year 1949 american biologist S.C. Solomon identified a wheat variety developed at experimental station which showed shorter plants that grew only 2 to 2.5 feet. This variety was called Norin 10. Later, Norin 10 was crossed with the local winter wheat in the United States and this variety showed 25% higher yields in the year 1956. This was known as Gaines. The Gaines variety was shared with Norman Borlaug, father of green revolution. He in turn cross the variety of gains with the spring wheats of mexico and by the year 1960s many varieties incorporating norin 10 dwarfing genes were released one important point to note here is the wheat varieties we are talking are the strains with the better yields and they are not the transgenic crops which are getting popular today the transgenic crops are genetically modified and are different from the variants some examples of transgenic crops are bt brinjal It shows high tolerance against the insects and GM mustard dhara mustard hybrid 2 it is a herbicide tolerant transgenic crop however both this transgenic crops have not received approval till now coming back to our discussion here we will discuss the coming of green revolution in india ms swaminathan's contribution to green revolution is well known his scientific knowledge about india's climatic condition and crop productivity guided the country towards the path of agricultural revolution which made india a self sufficient country in grain production the gains variety of wheat was a winter wheat and not suitable for the climatic condition of india borlog spring wheats from mexico with dwarfing genes were better suited for the climatic conditions as mexico and india had similar geoclimatic conditions as the tropic of cancer passes from both the countries Hence the Mexican wheat used in Indo-Mexican hybrids became backbone of green revolution in the 1960s. Four Mexican wheat varieties were first experimented in the fields of Indian Agricultural Research Institute 
and with the positive results from the year 1966-67 large scale plantation of these varieties were taken up India from here attained self sufficiency in food grains production this article is also important because questions related to biotechnology and its application frequently appear in the examination for example in the year 2020-21 question appeared bolgard 1 and bolgard 2 technologies are mentioned in the context of the answer is b developing genetically modified crop plants bolgard 1 and 2 relates to india's first biotech crop approved for commercialization in the year 2002 it is also only biotech crop commercially grown in india it has inbuilt gene against the destructive american bollworm the next article we have picked up appeared on the explained page of indian express on 15th june the article pertains to gst syllabus which includes part of agriculture section of economy paper and public distribution system The Union Cabinet recently approved the constitution of Interministerial Committee to facilitate world's largest grain storage plant in the cooperative sector. The Interministerial Committee is under the chairmanship of Minister of Cooperation and consists of Minister of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare, the Minister of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution and the Minister of Food Processing Industries. From 2019 we have picked up a mains PYQ the approach for this question is given in the word and the pdf document so let us discuss about the world's largest grain storage plant in the cooperative sector presently the agencies involved in grain management are food corporation of india the central warehouses corporation the warehouse development regulatory authority railways and civil supply departments of states Under this new plan the Ministry of Cooperation is aiming to set up a network of integrated grain storage facilities through primary agriculture credit societies there are more than 1 lakh PSCs with a huge member base of 13 crore farmers why do we need such a facility the first reason is large population india the most populous country in the world accounts for 18% of global population and only 11% of the arable land the another reason is food security imperative india is also running the world's largest food program under the national food security act that covers around 81 crore people presently india has a food grain storage capacity of 145 million metric tons against the total food production of 311 million metric tons that leaves a gap of 166 million metric tons which is a huge concern for india another reason why do we need such a facility is india has a storage capacity of 47% however if we see at the regional levels few southern states have 90% and above capacity while the northern states like uttar pradesh and bihar are having capacity below 15% grain storage plant is also required to prevent the food wastage as in the absence of sufficient storage facilities and due to open storage food grains are damaged so what is this integrated facility the new storage plant is based on the hub and spoke model presently in the country there are 63000 primary agricultural credit societies under this new plan 56767 will function as spoke with grain capacity of 1000 metric tons each the rest 7233 will function as hubs and will have a storage capacity of 2000 metric tons each together they will form a combined grain storage of 70 million tons talking about the funding out of 2.25 crore Rupees fifty one lakh will come from the subsidy, and the rest will be coming as margin money or loan. It is also expected that primary agricultural credit societies will earn rupees forty five lakh in a year. The primary agricultural credit societies will purchase equipments like tillers, harvesters, under various government schemes such as submission on the agricultural mechanization and agricultural infrastructure fund. these equipments will be rented to farmers the new plan also includes the concept of modern silos that will have the facility of 
computerized real time monitoring systems these will be rented out to food corporation of india and other private agencies under the new plan no separate allocation has been given it will be implemented by the convergence of eight schemes now let us talk about the schemes four schemes are covered from the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare naming agriculture infrastructure fund agricultural marketing infrastructure scheme mission for integrated development of horticulture and sub mission on agricultural mechanization two schemes are covered from the ministry of food processing industries naming pradhan mantri formalization of micro food processing enterprises scheme and pradhan mantri kisan sampada yojana the other two schemes are covered from the ministry of consumer affairs food and public distribution these are allocation of food grains under national food security act and procurement operations at the minimum support price now let us discuss about the benefits of the plan the new plan will address the shortage of storage infrastructure by facilitating establishment of godowns at the level of the primary agricultural credit societies it will enable the pscs to undertake other activities such as procurement centers for the state agencies or food corporation of india it will serve as the fair price shops also as common processing units for assaying sorting and grading the new plan will bring down the post harvesting losses also the handling and the transportation cost will come down given the increased choice to sell the produce the farmers will not depend on distressed sell as the choices will be based depending on the market condition hence to ensure the food security of the billion plus population a robust network of storage is required the topic is also relevant because upsc continuously focuses on agricultural issues like public distribution systems minimum support price etc as in 2020 question was asked in india which of the following can be considered as public investment in agriculture here you have to eliminate the wrong answers you should know what is public investment in agriculture public investment is to create capital or social assets to improve the agricultural productivity now msp gives remunerative price but does not create an asset for the government and option number 4 free electricity supply to farmers and waiver of agricultural loan by banking system creates government liabilities so obviously option 1 is incorrect 4 is incorrect 5 is incorrect remaining option number 2 computerization of primary agricultural credit societies it focuses on digitizing their functioning the social capital development it will improve the knowledge base of the farmers increasing the food production and option 6 setting up of cold storage facilities by the government it will reduce the post harvest losses and also create durable assets in the field of agriculture therefore option 2 is correct 3 is correct and 6 is correct therefore option number c is the correct answer the third article we have picked up for today's discussion is based on the topic of fresh kill which appeared on june 17th indian express this article pertains to general studies three paper relating to conservation environmental pollution and degradation several beaches along the southeast coast of texas in the united states have been littered with the lifeless bodies of tens of thousands of fish the unfortunate event has heightened the concerns about the potential exposure to bacteria and the dangers the majority of the deceased fish belongs to the menhaden species while other types such as catfish bass shark trout and the stingrays have also been discovered among the casualties of the incidents first let us know what is the fish kill event fish kill refer to sudden and unanticipated death of aquatic animals including fish which can occur due to various reasons in texas this phenomena is relatively common during the summer season now let us discuss the reasons for fish kill event one significant factor is the depletion of dissolved oxygen in the water leading to suffocation 
This is because the rise in sea temperature, particularly in the shallow waters, which causes the ocean waters to get warmer, thereby reducing the oxygen holding capacity. As a result, the aquatic animals struggle to breathe, leading to erratic behaviors that further depletes the oxygen level. The unusually low concentrations of dissolved oxygen in the affected waters are therefore considered responsible for these deaths. Another reason for the depletion of dissolved oxygen is the calmness of the seas. When the waves and winds are absent, there is limited water movement which hampers the circulation and the availability of the dissolved oxygen. This lack of mixing results into more depletion of the oxygen levels in the water, posing an additional threat to marine life. Another reason for the depletion of oxygen is cloudy skies. The presence of the clouds inhibits the process of photosynthesis by the phytoplankton which generates the oxygen as a byproduct. Also, with the reduced sunlight penetration, the oxygen production is impeded, resulting in lower levels of dissolved oxygen. Other reasons for depletion of dissolved oxygen are alteration in the natural water chemistry, biological changes, rising temperatures of oceans, chemical pollutions due to miscellaneous human activities. Now let us move forward to another part of the discussion based on the biological oxygen demand. Oxygen can enter a water body through photosynthesizing aquatic plants, diffusion at the surface, aeration from flowing and churning water. So what is this phenomena of biological oxygen demand? The term is used to describe the quantity of oxygen that bacteria and other microorganisms need when breaking down organic substances. The breaking down by bacteria happens in the presence of oxygen under specific temperature conditions. The bacterial demand of oxygen increases with increase in the organic pollutants in the water. Water bodies contain dissolved oxygen which is essential for the respiration of aquatic life. However, due to the presence of organic matter in water, the aerobic microorganisms consume dissolved oxygen while decomposing the organic material leading to further decrease in oxygen available for aquatic animals. Therefore, higher share of BOD indicates a greater pollution in a water body. The levels of organic matter in water are increasing due to various human-induced sources such as pollution. So how does water pollution contribute to increase in BOD? The addition of excessive organic waste leads to depletion of oxygen supply and this depletion is detrimental to the dependent aquatic life leading to death. Subsequently, the anaerobic bacteria which do not require oxygen initiate the decomposition process and produce compounds which are harmful to the human health. In response to the process, the aerobic bacteria which rely on oxygen intensify their oxygen consumption to break down these organic waste thereby leading to further depletion of dissolved oxygen in water. Hence, the amount of BOD is a measurement of oxygen required for biological breakdown of the organic material. There are certain methods suggested for reducing BOD in water. The foremost important method is mitigation of pollution sources as an initial step to reduce the BOD. Implementation of the advanced oxidation process is another process. Adoption of the flocculation and the sedimentation techniques using substances like polyelectrolyte. Flocculation is the chemical process in which the colloidal particles come out of suspension to sediment down in flake or flock by adding clarifying agents. Another process is application of activated charcoal for the adsorption purposes and also employment of reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis is a process in which a large pressure is applied to solution so as to overcome the osmotic pressure. This pushes the pure solvent under pressure out of solution through semi-permeable membrane. From the discussion we had, we can easily solve this question, which also proves the relevancy of this topic. The biological oxygen demand is a standard criterion for polluting assay in the aquatic ecosystem. Now we will be discussing the approach to follow the questions we have mentioned in the articles. 
the first pyq we are taking is how did india benefit from contribution of sir m vishwaswaraya and dr m s swaminathan in the fields of water engineering and agricultural science respectively in the context of our article we will be discussing about contributions of dr m s swaminathan in the fields of agricultural science you will be starting briefly by introducing m s swaminathan's contribution his significance in the context of india's development in the main body you will be discussing the contributions of m s swaminathan in agricultural science his work in green revolution and impact on agricultural productivity mention his role in high yield crop varieties particularly in wheat and rice and the benefits of his contributions you can also discuss how the introduction of high yield varieties increased crop productivity helped in achieving food security and self sufficiency mention the positive impact on farmers income rural development reduction in poverty also the long term impacts don't forget to mention ms swaminathan's continued advocacy for sustainable agriculture ecological balance and conservation of biodiversity his contributions in formulation of agriculture policies establishment of institutions like national bureau of plant genetic resources need to be mentioned to substantiate your answer the next pyq is what are the reformative steps taken by government to make food grain distribution system more effective briefly talk about the food grain distribution system in india importance of an effective food grain distribution for food security for the population the reformative steps we can mention are national food security act introduced in 2013 to provide subsidized food grains to a large section of population explain how the implementation of targeted public distribution system under nfsa has helped in improving the effectiveness you should not forget to mention the modernization and technology interventions the use of technology such as computerization digitization of records to streamline the food grain distribution system these were introduced to minimize corruption ensure transparency and reduce pilferage also you can talk about the steps taken by government to strengthen the storage and distribution infrastructure such as modern warehouses silos and godowns role of food corporation of india in maintaining buffer stocks and ensuring smooth procurement is important reforms in procurement and msp such as e procurement system direct benefit transfer of msp electronic auction platform increase in msp for various crops to incentivize farmers and ensure their participation in food grain distribution however there are still challenges existing like leakages inefficiencies need for better targeting reforms like one nation one ration card which aims to enable interstate portability of ration cards to enhance access to food grains for migrant population is important to mention the last topic of our session is based on the news article which appeared on indian express on june 17th this article talks about the trend of remittances based on the world bank's report it forms an important part of syllabus of economy in the external sector the world bank's latest migration and development brief report predicts a significant decrease in remittances to india compared to the previous year in 2022 remittances to india increased by over 24% reaching a record break of dollar 111 billion India will only see a marginal growth of 0.2% in remittance inflows in 2023 as per the report. Now let us see the reasons for the decline. The slower growth of high-tech industries particularly in United States may impact the demand of IT workers and lead to a shift in remittance flows from formal channels to informal money transfer methods. Also, the OECD, a group of 38 affluent democratic countries, plays a significant role in this situation. The decline in oil prices has adversely affected the growth of Gulf Cooperation Council, which consists of six Arab nations located around Arabian Gulf. The GCC countries are expected to experience a decline in growth from 5.3% in 2022. to 3% in 2023 particularly due to decreasing oil prices therefore there is a reduced demand for migrant workers in these gcc nations adding to factors impacting remittance flow why are remittances so important they serve as a vital source of financial inflow for countries especially in the aftermath of covid-19 pandemic crucial role in providing foreign exchange to countries which contributes to their economic stability and growth it is 
सेकेंड मोस्ट सोर्स ऑफ एक्सटर्नल फाइनेंसिंग फॉर लो एंड मिडिल इनकम कंट्रीज आफ्टर एफ डी आई ड्यूरिंग द टाइम्स ऑफ नीड रेमिटेंसिस बिकम एन इवन इम्पोर्टेंट एज दे कॉम्प्लीमेंट गवर्नमेंट कैश ट्रांसफर दे ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड असेंशियल सपोर्ट टू हाउस होल्स हेल्पिंग डेम मीट देयर फाइनेंशियल नीड्स एंड इम्प्रूविंग देयर लिविंग स्टैंडर्ड्स द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ रेमिटेंसिस एक्सटेंड्स बियॉन्ड इकोनॉमिक एस्पेक्ट दे कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू सोशल वेलफेयर एंड पॉवर्टी रिडक्शन ऑल्सो अ क्रूशियल रोल इन ग्लोबल फाइनेंशियल लैंडस्केप फॉर एग्जाम्पल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू अकाउंटेड फॉर थ्री ट्वेंटी सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ एफ डी आई इनफ्लोज शोइंग ए सिग्निफिकेंट इंक्रीज फ्रॉम टू फोर्टी सेवन परसेंट इन ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन इट ऑल्सो अमाउंटेड टू अप्रॉक्सिमेटली वन जीरो थ्री सिक्स परसेंट ऑफिशियल डेवलपमेंट असिस्टेंस अप फ्रॉम नाइन थर्टी फाइव परसेंट इन ट्वेंटी If we look at the remittances as percentage of GDP in South Asian countries then for South Asia it is 4% Nepal 23% Pakistan 7.9% Sri Lanka 5.1% Bangladesh 4.7% and India it is only 3.3 percentages the primary sources for remittances for India are United States United Kingdom and Singapore these high income destinations contribute to approximately 36% of India's total remittances also if we look at the internal trend Kerala and Karnataka have been the highest recipient of remittances however in 2020 2021 Maharashtra surpassed both the states here in this graph you can see clearly the data provided so why did in 2020 2022 India saw 24% increase in remittances The 36% increase was seen from high income destinations US UK Singapore as after pandemic demand for labor increased leading to increased hiring also the remittances from gulf cooperation council countries accounted for 28% the strong labor market condition wage increase in high income destination countries and higher energy prices and low food price inflation in gcc countries played a significant role The GCC government implemented special measures to control the food price inflation that protected the remittance potential of the migrants as increased savings led to increased remittances. The top 5 recipient countries for remittances in 2020-20 were as follows: India, Mexico, China, Philippines, Pakistan.